Shabbat Shalom. This week's Torah portion is Baha'alotcha, as you raise up. And it refers to the very beginning of the portion where we talk about the lighting of the menorah. But I would like to focus on a section in the portion that's actually in the middle, Numbers chapter 10. And it begins with the creation, the, the uh, commandment that God gives to Moses to make two silver trumpets. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, make two silver trumpets of hammered work, you shall make them, and you shall use them for summoning the congregation and for breaking camp. And the instruction then goes on to detail the various ways the trumpets are blowing depending on what the function is. Just before this section, we are still talking about the tabernacle and various uh, procedures having to do with the tabernacle. Now we're talking about what happens when you either have to gather the people around the tabernacle or, and this is most significant, when you're going to break up the camp, when it is time to march. And this indeed is what this chapter is all about. The instructions with, the, with regard to the trumpets for other situations are much less important to the context of this chapter because what's most important here are the two instructions, one having to do with breaking camp and the other one having to do with, with war. Uh, and this is verse 8, uh, verse 9. And when you go to war in your land against the adversary who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets that you may be remembered before the Lord your God and you shall be saved from your enemies. Okay, and then the um, then we see about the beginning of the breaking up of the camp. In the second year, in the second month, on the 20th day of the month, the cloud lifted from over the tabernacle of the Testament, and the people of Israel set out by stages from the wilderness of Sinai. They are beginning to move. And this is a very, very exciting chapter. Let's review what has happened until now. The children of Israel have left Egypt. They have gone through the parting of the Red Sea. Things have been incredibly miraculous, glorious even. Uh, they have come to Mount Sinai. They have received the revelation. They have received the Ten Commandments, the Torah on Sinai. They received a number of laws that have been given to them. But there was also a terrible fall, a terrible crisis, the golden calf. The children of Israel worship the golden calf. And, and this is a terrible sin. But then they repent. Moses prays intensively for them. They are forgiven. And then we go through what most of the last, the, the end of um, the book of Exodus, all of the book of Leviticus, and the beginning of the book of Numbers is all about the tabernacle, building the tabernacle, the sacrifices, the work of the priests and the Levites. All of this is now completed. What is the next step? Break up the camp. Fold up the tabernacle, put it in its, its moving stage, and we, look, and we learned in last week's portion exactly who carries what item as they march forward. Go to the land of Israel. And that is exactly what's happening here. And in fact, if we go to verse 29, we see Moses calling to his, son, his father-in-law, the man we know of as Jethro, although here we learn he has a few other names. Moses said to Chovad, the son of Reuel the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are setting out for the place of which the Lord has said, I will give to you. Come with us, and we will do good to you, for the Lord has promised good to Israel. Now, Jethro, or Chovab, as he is called here, we're not, he, he hesitates, and then Moses tries to convince him. He says, um, please do not leave us, for you know where we should camp in the wilderness, and you will serve as eyes for us. And if you do go with us, whatever good the Lord will do to us, the same will do to you. So they set out from the Mount of the Lord three days' journey. And the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord went before them three days' journey to seek out a resting place for them. And the cloud of the Lord was over them by day whenever they set out from the camp. As Moses speaks to his father-in-law, he is trying to convince them to join them because he is excited. He is passionate. Something fabulous is going to happen. We are going to go. We are going into the land of Israel. And he urges his father-in-law to join him. It's not clear, by the way, at the end of this section, whether or not his father-in-law actually does join him, and the commentaries are divided. However, we do see 
that later on in the book of Joshua and again in the book of Judges, we see mention of this family, the Kenites, the family of Jethro, of Chovah, and also as they are known as the family of Heber. But that's a different story. What I want to point out here, if we didn't know what happened next, we would feel that this was the most exciting moment, that the Bible itself has been bringing us forward to this moment. Everything that has happened until now is a preparation. Now they are getting up with the trumpets in full majesty and they're going to march in the land of Israel. And the issue of the trumpets, the two things that I pointed out about the trumpets, which are the most important, are those that are most critical to this journey. The blowing of the trumpet when they break the camp so that they know how to march and the blowing of the trumpet as they go to war. Because it is clear that as they enter the land of Israel, they will go to war. They are going to have to capture the land of Israel. And this is the final preparation for that. And then what happens? Then we have a very interesting two verses. And I'll read these verses to you. And whenever the ark set out, Moses said, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let those who hate you flee before you. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, to the ten thousand thousands of Israel. This, indeed, is a verse that describes the exact call that Moses gives as they are about to march. The, the, the call that says, yes, we're ready to go, let's move forward. But what does he say? He says, arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let those who hate you flee before you. This is not just about God accompanying us in our journeys through the desert. This is God accompanying us as we enter the land of Israel, as we are about to conquer the land. That is why the focus here is on let your enemies be scattered. These two verses in the Masoretic text, which is the standard Hebrew version, the text of the Bible, are set aside by two opposite, the backwards letters, the letter Nun written backwards so that it looks like brackets. Indeed, this, this, this section is set aside. These two verses is set aside. Many commentaries have wondered why. But there's no question that there's something very climactic about these two sentences. As they're getting ready to move into the land of Israel, Moses gives out that call, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. What is so unusual, what is so interesting, what we need to focus on about these two verses is what is the very next verse. And that is the beginning of chapter 11. Everything changes. And the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about are their misfortunes. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. These opposite nuance, these brackets, are here to show us the difference between the climax, the expectation. We are now getting ready to go into the land of Israel and the immediate fall just afterwards, beginning in chapter 11 and taking us through the rest of the book of Numbers, we have sin after sin after sin. At this point, we believe that in another 10 or 11 days' time, the children of Israel will begin their war of conquest of the land of Israel. What happens at starting in chapter 11 tells us that all that is going to change. Afterwards, we have the sin of the spies, where God says that the children of Israel, this generation, are not going to enter the land, but they will have to wander 40 years in the desert. We have afterwards the sin of Moses and Aaron, as they try to bring water from the rock, and they sin, and not, and, and not uh, uh, doing what God had commanded them to do, and then they are told that they will not enter the land. And so it goes, and we have the, the, the rebellion of Korach, and we have uh, so many other things that happen throughout the rest of the book. But as we read this section, as we read chapter 10, what these brackets are telling us, every time we read it, even though we know the end of the story, let's read these two verses. And, and Lord, oh, rise, O oh Lord, and let your enemies be, be uh, scattered. Read these two verses each time as if this is really what is going to happen next. Then we'll understand and appreciate how deep that fall was just after these verses. Shabbat Shalom from Samaria.